Good morning. Welcome to Devotions this morning. Uh, it's good to be with you. Um, hopefully, maybe some of you are catching this on YouTube live. If you are, please um, hear our apologies for not being consistent with that. Um, there have been a number of reasons. Um, I'm very grateful to Brian for filling in for me. He and I split this pretty evenly when both of us are here and um, working. And he was out for a while, and then I've been out for a while. I'm back this week, although um, may not be working full days. We'll see. Um, but thank you all also for your prayers and concern. Doing just fine, doing well. Um, I'm recording from my living room as I have been for a while. This is Talia, which you can't see very much of her, but um, so technology wise, we have gotten it on channel two consistently um, in a way that can be, um, that doesn't leave us wide open on Facebook for folks to do things with our videos. And it also, we've found um, a way to make sure that the internet is strong enough so that it doesn't get, it doesn't get frozen. It doesn't do the buffering or thinking thing. <coughs> so probably now the best place to find um, these devotions is at nine o'clock on channel two, if you're a Timbercrest person. If you're not a Timbercrest person, um, if it's just Brian and me, then you'll be able to find it live. If we have resident involvement, then um, we need to make it um, unlisted or private until after we can play it on channel two. So um, if it's not there right at 8.15, check back later in the day. Um, check back sometime, I'd say sometime after 10, and it'll be there. But the most consistent will be channel two at nine o'clock. Okay, I think that's enough for the announcements. We are in the epiphany season, and we are starting to use, um, dang. we're starting to use the upper room, which is a devotional that is used in healthcare and Crestwood for the Bible studies that they have um, daily, uh, the, the devotions they have daily and the Bible studies they have weekly. So we'll be joining with um, healthcare Crestwood folks in that until Lent, then we'll do Lenten devotional. Um, and then we'll see where we're at after that. Maybe something completely new will emerge between now and then. We shall see. So upper room. And I find it here on my phone. So that's why I'm using my phone here. Maybe I find it here. Okay. Well, we're going to use... Instead, we're going to use take our moments in our days. This is an Anabaptist devotional created by Harold Press, which is, I think, the Mennonite Press. We're going to use one of their... One of their devotionals. Um, today is Monday, so we will use an Epiphany Monday morning. This looks like it has a pair of scriptures that is related to one another, so we will read both of them. Genesis 12, 1 through 7. Now the Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house and the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and the one who curses you, I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord had told him and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Abram took his wife Sarai and his brother's son Lot and all the possessions that they had gathered 
and the persons whom they had acquired in Haran. And they set forth to go to the land of Canaan. When they had come to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land to the place at Shechem, to the oak of Morah. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give this land. So he built there an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. And the New Testament scripture is Galatians 3, verses 6 through 14. Just as Abraham believed God, and so it was reckoned to him as righteousness. So you see, those who believe are the descendants of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, declared the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, All the Gentiles shall be blessed in you. For this reason, those who believe are blessed with Abraham who believed. For all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not observe and obey all the things written in the book of the law. Now it is evident that no one is justified before God by the law. For the one who is righteous will live by faith. But the law does not rest on faith. On the contrary, whoever does the works of the law will live by them. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, in order that in Jesus Christ the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles, so that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. <coughs> Hmm. I have a hard time with all of the curse cursing. I think um, life curses people, and I think people can often choose the the way um, a way of life that curses them. People can turn from God and end up being cursed. My image of God has never been one who of a God who. Um, smites and curses. I'm, I'm open to being um, showed differently because I think there are many stories in the Bible and there are many ways in which they talk about cursing. Um, but I often read it as a, um, you know, we bear, we bear the consequences on us of the things that we do, the good ones and the bad ones. And so when we act with faith, um, like Abram did. When we hear the call clearly and go in the direction, we find ourselves led into things that are beyond our imagining. <clears throat> Doesn't mean that that road is always easy. Um, so I actually... More than that piece of the story, what I was thinking as I was reading these stories is actually a um, the, the the very nature of of um, founding anchoring stories. And particularly, one came to mind. There was a a, a funeral I attended for a resident at a previous nursing home, and his family told two stories about him. Um, that they all knew and that had become central stories to the family and central about how they lived. And one of those stories was that he um, came out, they were not, um, he was not rich. He and his wife were not rich, actually um, very poor during the depression. Um, and they um, came out once and found a couple of, to the parking lot and found a couple of boys siphoning off gas from their car. Um, and this man evidently gave him a stern talking to and led him by the ears to the gas station, filled up a jug of gas for them, paid for it, gave it to him and sent him on their way. Um, <clears throat> And that, that was a story that they didn't really know the outcome of because I don't think that there was any way for him to find out what those boys' responses had been. The other story told about him was that um, he came upon someone in need and um, he and his wife had $20 cash that week. 
and he gave him $20 cash because that was what he needed. And his wife said, are you sure about this? And he said, God will provide. Evidently, um, about a year later, as the family told it, they had, he and his wife um, were at the end of their money and they hadn't gone, they hadn't been able to get food for the week and they didn't have any money. And um, they were talking about what they were going, going to do. <clears throat> and he said, again, God will provide. Um, and that evening, they got a knock at the door. And the man that they had loaned or given $20 to the previous year came back and said, um, you have no idea how much, how important that money was to me. I wanted to give it back to you as my, as my gratitude. They had not arranged it as a loan. They had arranged it as a gift. Um, but there was the $20 that they needed. This became a central story for this family. And that's, I mean, it's a good story, both of them. Um, but I think it, it anchored their hospitality and their sense of generosity in ways that went far beyond those two moments. And so I wonder what, what anchoring stories are in our lives that have been passed down to us by other people. But then also what anchoring stories do we tell about ourselves or our relationship with God that can become perhaps anchoring stories for other people. So Abraham's journey of faith has inspired <clears throat> so many other people to step out in faith, even when we don't know where the road leads to be encouraged that there is a future beyond their own and live toward that future. Even if we don't see we can't see how that might happen. So that's my little riff on those two scriptures this morning. Um, we continue in our prayer, um, our prayer schedule today. On the 12th, we pray for our government, for those in political office, and for those in government jobs. It feels really important right now. Um, feels like a, today feels like a good day to do that. We also pray this morning <clears throat> for Canada, Mexico, Guatemala, Belize, Honduras, El Salvador, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Panama, and for our own country, for the USA. And today we pray for, at Timbercrest, we pray for resident care and social services staff. That is um, Sabina and Kira and now Deja, who was activities coordinator in healthcare, um, has just switched to being social services fully. So we pray for those three folks in our building and for their ministry and for others that they work with. They have um, a few others like um, Dr. Paris and Beth Caskell that come on campus to help. And um, I would say hospice social workers, those sorts of things. Okay. Let's use the prayer this morning. From have ribbons in my book and when my cats sit on my lap and I use the book with the ribbons in it they very much enjoy it and I have to be a little careful I don't get a claw in the hand all right let's pray I will open the windows of heaven for you says the Lord of hosts and pour down an overflowing blessing <clears throat> for those who revere your name O God the sun of righteousness will rise with healing in its wings Holy God, you want the light of your presence to pervade our lives. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. 
You hide us in the shadow of your hand. We pray for ourselves and for those dear to us. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. You are able to do what you have promised. We pray for our community and for our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You give your people as a light to the nations. We pray for the church in all places that we may know the freedom of life in the spirit. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. You give life to everything on earth and in the sea. We pray for the world and for all who care for creation. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. We offer you other concerns we carry in our hearts. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. God of light, your rising reveals all things in their true proportion. Illumine our lives that we may see rightly, love deeply, and act justly. In the example of Jesus, we pray for the advent of your reign. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I love this benediction. It's part of... Um, an Isaiah scripture, I think. By the ten tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. May it be so this day and always. Um, go in peace. We did not have a grief support group yesterday. Um, that's, that's on me. Um, I plan to record Lectio Divina or Praying with Scripture this afternoon. So there'll be one and that will be up on channel two. Um, that'll be at three 30 this afternoon after Timbercrest chat, I think. Um, so happy Tuesday. And we'll see you tomorrow. Take care.